Hello, it's Stacy, Adult and Outreach Services Librarian here at the Niles Main District Library. And today I'm going to be giving you a quick run through of Ancestry.com, um, giving you four tips to take with you um, now that Ancestry is offering free remote access through April 30th to their databases. Now is a great time to start your family search project. Um, so let's begin. The first thing you are going to want to do is to open up a web browser. I'm using Google Chrome, but feel free to use whichever one you're more comfortable with. Before we get started, um, I just wanted to say, make sure that you have some basic information on your ancestor before you start your search. So you want to have their name, their birthday, when they passed away, the names and birthdays of any siblings that they had, the names of their parents, and then the city that they lived in, okay? So we are going to click on the research tab here on the Niles Libraries homepage. You can access it at www.nileslibrary.org. So research, and our databases are ordered alphabetically. So if you click the letter A, Ancestry should be the third result down. So scroll down until you find it. Okay. And there it is. Now you're gonna be prompted to enter your card number. So go ahead and grab that card so you can input your number and poof, we're in, which brings us to tip number one, which is don't get overwhelmed. There is a lot of information behind these walls and you are going to come into some roadblocks. It's inevitable. And don't worry, I promise you're doing it right. Because there's so much information, you're bound to find some hits that are not relevant to your search. That's when you step away, take a breath, um, regroup, and then come back fresh. One day I spent eight hours on Ancestry and I only found two new facts about my ancestors. And it was devastating, but I took a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks um, off to regroup, came back fresh and was able to get restarted. So don't get overwhelmed, keep going. I promise you will find some great results and don't think that you're going to find everything that you're looking for in one sitting because that's not going to happen okay so go ahead and enter your ancestor's name into the search fields okay starting with the first name and then the last name and then make sure that you enter where they lived um you do that because inevitably if you just did their first and last name, you're gonna find that there are a bunch of different people with your ancestor's name. You're gonna find millions of results and that goes back to that tip that I told you about, about not getting overwhelmed. Try and filter the results as best you can and go from there. Okay, so we hit search and here are our results. Now we have, even though we, you know, entered the name of the place where my aunt, where the ancestor um, lived, we're still hit with over 90,000 results. And that's, it's a lot of information. And you'll see that there are several people with your ancestor's last name, which leads us to tip number two. Take note of any different or variant spellings of your ancestor's name. When this info was collected, it was done by hand in print and in cursive. That data was then transcribed by a person and then input into a computer to give you what you see now on your screen. Somewhere along the way, mistakes probably happened. Um, maybe the census taker misheard your ancestor's name and spelled it incorrectly, or the transcriber couldn't read what the census taker wrote, and entered the information incorrectly. But either way, there could be a record out there floating around with your ancestor's name that 
you've ignored because it's not what you're looking for, because it's not what you know. I found many times when I do my genealogy classes in the library, that happens frequently with people who have immigrant ancestors, um, American census takers, maybe they misheard um, your ancestor and spelled the name incorrectly or they're spelling it phonetically. Either way, write those misspellings down because they may come in handy later, okay? Um, so now that we have looked through this info, let me click this. Um, you, you're gonna verify that this is the person that you're looking for. Um, you're gonna verify that they were married to this person on this date, it's their birthday. Um, but if I continue down and I look to the bottom right-hand side of the page, I see that there's some additional info. And now I'm curious, which leads us to tip number three, click down. Clicking down leads you to so many different types of records. We're talking yearbook photos, um, newspaper stories. There is a wealth of information out there if you just click down. You're not limited to just what you find on the first screen. Um, clicking down may lead you to find additional information about their spouse or their spouse's relatives. Um, and if you aren't sure, um, feel free to use the filters that they offer. You'll also discover that as you get further down into the pages and into the search results, many of the records that you uncover are irrelevant or not useful to your search. Okay, now you're starting to get the hang of this, I hope. And that leads us to tip number four, which is write down what you find. Your brain is the ultimate storehouse, but you are bound to forget some things. Um, Ancestry has downloadable forms that um, are printable and you can use to write down any of the information that you found. Just like Henry Jones in The Last Crusade, every great historian keeps careful records, and so should you, okay? So I'll leave you to it. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us um, for a list of the online resources available to you with your Niles Main District Library card. Um, please visit our website, www.nileslibrary.org backslash resources and go from there. Have a great day. Thank you.